Good morning, folks. We'll start by introducing newcomers to some fascinating ways to kill time. NASA's Earth Observatory maintains global models for a number of different metrics. Just make sure you have some time on your hands before you dive in. Every metric is also a video replay of the last few years you can compare and run through. Well, folks, we have another deviation at that same buoy, but now we're also having something more. The earthquakes of moderate intensity are ringing there. Hopefully it's not foreshocking. Also at a moderate tremor up near Japan, this one rang as high as 6.3 as read by a human seismologist, a couple other higher readings there as well. South in the Scotia Sea we saw another moderate rumble, and Oklahoma also has not decided to cut it out just yet. Flipping that to the sky shows no real severe weather today except high snow totals. The bigger story here is the nice little warm up most of the country got the last few days is short lived. We have a major cool down coming this next week. It's not yet fully evident here, but the negative oscillation is going to massively intrude the central and eastern portion of the U.S. back down to the Gulf states yet again. You can see the larger system past New Zealand at this point. Didn't leave without dropping a damaging storm though. Luckily it's mostly past now with most of the precipitation sticking to northern Australia for another day. Europe, watching the same system as yesterday, but a bit stalled and north shifted as we again see a multi-low cell that traps itself before running straight across the continent. It'll be interesting to see if it gets stuck again here or continues eastward today. Last but not least, we've discussed the moisture drive from the Atlantic cut by the Andes and eventually either dropping straight or snarled by one of those long hooking convergences. Today it's the latter and the southern system is very strong. Kicking to space weather. Earth's magnetic connection to the sun went from this to this. The jump from clear globe to grainy and see-through indicates that our connection is on the back side of the sun rather than the Earth-facing disk. Here it's close but indeed behind the limb. The second interplanetary shock wave we've expected indeed struck this morning. Luckily the initial wave that took us into elevated speed was sparse, with density following as the speed fell. This is causing only minor instability to Earth's magnetic systems, and for storming we'd need another shock or serious south pointing wake of that CME. Solar flaring is indeed making a return as well. We registered an M-class solar flare this morning from a sunspot group that we cannot yet see. You can definitively see the coronal disruption there, but the intensity gram reveals true position behind the limb. The other sunspots on the earth-facing disk might appear nice, but they are magnetic disappointments. That major group is now an ambiguous mess of three separate regions, but which keeps umbral separation enough to preclude larger flaring thus far. Coronal hole incoming, dark, equatorial, unblocked by coronal fields, umbral fields absent as well in the southern portion. This is half of our increasing earthquake condition index in the moment, along with Neptune conjoining our star and that Mars-Venus-Mercury dance we showed yesterday. Peaks as the coronal hole faces Earth, even though right now we show only moderate power to her. Sunspots, coronal holes, and here, a couple plasma filaments on the disk. Remember, these have been just as big of an eruption threat this cycle as the sunspots themselves. Got another incoming. Seismic and solar watches are elevated for a few days. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.